17 pounds in 22 weeks. I wonder if he's gonna be any real people that have had real results on. That's what I'd do next if I was a charlatan So I gave the supplements to two viewers five days ago. Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Purization, creator of the RP Hypertrophy app, the RP Diet Coach app, and professor of exercise and sports science at Lehman College in the Bronx. Hey, the Bronx, whoa, f off, hey. Anyway, that's how I speak when I'm in the Bronx, but I also speak like that when confronted with people making false claims about diet and exercise. That's right, I get quite hood. And maybe nobody has made more false claims in public and been taken to a congressional hearing because of it about nutrition and exercise science in the most false way possible than Mr. Dr. Oz. Not the Oz you're used to going to when the tornado spins your ass up, dumps you somewhere outside of Kansas, but the Oz of lying to people about what they can expect from pills that do nothing. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's take a look at some of Dr. Oz's claims and see if we can make any sense out of them uh, at all. Roll camera. You may think magic is make-believe. Yes, magic is make-believe. Anyone after the age of eight is either in that opinion or is deemed mentally unwell. But this little bean. A bee. Muff I'm eating insects and shit. Bean. Bean. <laughs> Thanks, got the video guy. <laughs> Has scientists saying they found the magic weight loss cure for every body type. Wow, I wonder how many scientists have actually said they found the magic weight loss cure for every body type. As a scientist, let me break this down for you. Nobody, no wait, wait, I can do better. Body types aren't even a real thing. Magic isn't a real thing. And weight loss is not something to be cured, but to be treated. Because you do not acquire weight loss as some kind of disease that occurs from a pathogen or something like that. Finally, I'm cured of my weight loss? No, no, excess body weight is the thing you're actually trying to cure if you were even going to architect that position intelligently, Dr. Oz. Yes, I know you're an award-winning heart surgeon or some shit like that. But your boy went to PhD in gym class and I finished that shit about the critique you more. Ah, I'm already channeling. Uh, Scott, how am I supposed to say it? I just wish I had a lightning bolt to zap this dumb motherfucker with, you feel me? All right. It's green coffee beans. And when turned into a supplement, this miracle pill can burn fat fast. Did he say green coffee beans? Yes, he did. Okay. But apparently they only burn fat fast if turned into a pill. And I wonder if Dr. Oz makes any money off said pill. Now, for the record, there's nothing wrong with making money and nothing wrong with promoting your own supplements. What's wrong is if you're lying about their effect. Now, I'm sure he's not lying. Let's look at more of these claims. For anyone who wants to lose weight, this is very exciting and it's breaking news. Breaking news. I just wanna see like a little snippet of like the Ukraine war heating up again as Russia counterattacks. Wait, no, Bob, hold on a second. We've got breaking news coming in. Dr. Oz is a liar again. Oh, thanks, Amy. Let's go to that story right now. This study, <laughs> I love it when they mix beakers and shit. Yo, hold up, that looked like blood. Did they accidentally get footage of the vampire lab from like Blade Trinity? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? The fine science scientists look kind of fine too. What's up, girl? I love beakers and shit. You could, you could, you could, you could pour your, your blood into my... Presented at a meeting of- I mean, looking through a microscope at fucking coffee beans and shit. There's nothing I love more in this world than stock science footage. And remember, us scientists never, ever enter the lab without a laboratory coat on. If you've ever actually been to a science lab, you'll be shocked to see how much just regular people in there with regular clothes in most contexts. What a huge disappointment. Me, lab coat, goggles, and... Generally, I just like to wear a hazmat suit the whole time. It's fun, it's cozy in there. The world's largest scientific society triggered unprecedented excitement for a weight loss study. It showed women and men. Oh, thank God, and I thought it was only half of us. Lost an astounding amount of fat and weight, 17 pounds in 22 weeks. Private doctor and certified nutritionist, Lindsay Duncan is here with the findings. Folks, what do we think about men with the name Lindsay? Now, I know there are many people in the NBA with that name, but uh, I don't know what I think about it. You know, look, it's 2023, all the genders are great, but uh, oh, f why are your name Lindsay? Get a real man's name, Bob or Mehmet. That's Dr. Oz's first name, by the way. Solid name. So Dr. Lindsay, you, you love 
this bean. Why is that? You know, I usually don't recommend weight loss supplements. Uh, <laughs> there comes the qualifications. Folks, look at your screen. Naturopathic doctor and certified nutritionist. Certified nutritionist almost certainly is a play around the term registered dietitian, which he's almost certainly not. You can be a certified nutritionist with a variety of governing bodies that don't have a whole lot of authority in the United States or any other country. And you can actually make your own nutrition certification in most places just by announcing that you have one. Um, naturopathic doctor. Folks, that is unfortunately a real thing. And without offending too many people, it's all f***ing bullshit because doctors select from a variety of treatment options. They don't care if it's natural or not. If something natural works to help you, doctors love it. Real doctors, that is. People with MD and DO after their name. ND, uh, I have that shit. And if you're a naturopathic doctor, uh, hello, but go get a real degree. I'm kidding, sort of. I'm not kidding, that. I'll put my foot on that one. But this one has got me really, really excited. You look so excited, Lindsay. So in the medical community, the- You're not in the medical community, motherfucker. <sighs> Scott, this is gonna take a while. The weight loss community is all buzzing about this. Mm -hmm. I still want it to be a B. If he had me eating bees, I'd be like, I believe it. That's weird enough to work. And here's why. The recent study that you were talking about earlier, mm. They, the, the participants took the capsules and they did nothing else. They didn't exercise, they didn't change their diet. They actually consumed 2,400 calories a day. I don't understand how that's relevant, but please continue. They burned only 400 calories. Now that's weight gain, not weight loss. Yeah. What? Folks, there is no one past the size of a small child that has a resting metabolic rate of less than 400 calories. So it is impossible for these people to be burning less than 400 calories. There is no mathematical trickery going on here. This is at best a wild misunderstanding of how reality works, and at worst, a blatant lie. Now, there are people on the internet that claim to be able to read facial expressions and analyze whether or not people are lying consciously. I sure shit hope they get their fucking eye lasers on these motherfuckers, because I can't tell. I'm fucking autistic as shit. Uh, they all sound like they're trying to me, but uh, God damn, that can't be what he understands to be true. Do you know why? Because it's not true. And they lost over 10% of their total body weight. Wait a minute. 17 pounds, over 10% of their body weight. That means the average study participant would have to weigh less than 170 pounds. Hmm. Hmm. Generally, people in studies of drugs or supplements that help people lose weight are considerably overweight, and these people would not be. Again, nothing's adding up. Strange. 10%. 10%. They lost. But guys, again, the lie detector people on the internet. Can you focus in on Dr. Oz's face? He looks so interested and so compelling. And I will say his hair is just fabulous. Listen, again, as I continually insist on this channel and dwell in perpetuity, I may be in the conversation for the top 10, no, five straightest men of all time. But a little salt and pepper, older man with authority, a doctor. Oh my God. <laughs> I'd be on my knees quick. On my knees for what, you ask? Oh, come on. This is a, this is a channel for families. I can't get into that. Blowjob. If you guys like that and you want a little bit more, we have an extended X-rated, no, no, triple X-rated cut in our members section. Give that a click. Check it out if you're interested in seeing more. And they lost about 17 pounds per participant, and they had no side effects. Zero side effects. Okay, so he was wrong earlier. Got it, thanks. We're just throwing make-believe numbers out. By the way, zero side effects is bullshit. Every single study properly designed collects side effects data. And in every single study, just through statistical noise, you'll get people reporting a certain number of side effects. People report uh, gastrointestinal distress when there's nothing happening to them in reality. They report headache in most cases, nausea, and so on and so forth. So it's actually um, very unbecoming to say there's no side effects. You can say minimal side effects. You can say trace side effects. No side effects. Well, that's exactly the kind of bullshit you expect on a Dr. Oz's channel. And how long did they have to take the pills for? They did it for 12 weeks only. Okay. I'm no uh, scientist, but earlier, Scott the Video Guy, didn't they say 22 weeks? 17 pounds in 22 weeks. 
I mean, I don't, it, it, you can't even keep your own story straight. Like, if you're gonna lie, at least lie consistently. Uh, Lindsay, you had one job, Lindsay. Why wouldn't just drinking coffee do this? <laughs> yeah, because when, when the coffee that we drink is roasted, and when they roast it, they roast it at 475 degrees Fahrenheit. Hmm. That sounds like a big number that scares me. But the most important thing it does is it removes the chlorogenic acid. That's the key to what we're talking about today. Yeah, you know, I don't even know what the f chlorogenic acid is. Sounds made up, but it could be a real thing. It absolutely is possible that various modifications made to food in the preparatory process, such as the heating of coffee, can degrade some of the phytochemicals and prevent them from having positive effects or negative effects on your body. That's totally plausible. And so what this gentleman is saying sounds plausible. It's the results that we're concerned about. Does it really cause the things that he's claiming? I suspect the answer is no, by the way. Ugh. So how does it work? Well, it's amazing. It's what we call a triple threat. Yes, that's what we typically say in science, triple threat. It goes in and it causes the body to burn glucose or sugar and burn fat, mainly in the liver. He's either phrasing this very poorly or he's just making shit up. The liver doesn't burn a lot unless the liver metabolism goes up. And typically when your liver metabolism goes up, the doctors tell you you're gonna die really soon. The liver can liberate its glucose and fat stores and release them into the bloodstream. Maybe that's what he means. Never can tell. The second way and the most important way is it slows the release of sugar into the bloodstream. That contradicts my earlier point. I just don't know anything. So when you don't have sugar building up in the bloodstream, you don't have fat building up because sugar turns to fat. I mean, everybody knows that. God, this guy's a great public speaker. He could run for office, um, which Dr. Oz actually tried to do recently. Um, it reduces the amount of sugar going into your bloodstream. Somehow that's also supposed to increase the amount of sugar you burn. If I know where that sugar's burning, I guess it stays in the liver and gets burned inside the liver. What does the liver do with the extra ATP? Or is it an uncoupling process where extra heat is generated in the liver? You could make yourself into foie gras. Ooh, that sounds kind of tasty. Scott the video guy, you're amoral enough to eat foie gras. Do you like it? Do you pronounce it foie's groys when you order it? My man, that's how people know you're cultured. Everybody must remember that. Right. When the two are combined together, you get this synergistic effect. You mean contradictory effect? That basically burns and blocks and stops fat. You definitely want to stop fat. I see fat like shaking at a security guard with a gun. G give me your money, bank teller. And then the police come in and like, fat, you got to stop this. He's like, oh, I know. Oh, God, he drops his gun. And that's how the body works. Now, I always pride myself at having the smartest TV audience out there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that's good. Now, listen, if you watch Dr. Oz, look, my grandma used to watch Dr. Oz. No longer with us. Not because of Dr. Oz, but sure shit not, you know what I'm saying? He didn't help. Um, politically, amazing thing to say. I mean, God, is he like a sociopath or something? You know what? I'm getting quite hot. Let me uh, take my sweatshirt off. This is, a, this is war. <laughs> the smartest audience. And so I'm hoping some of you are skeptical about this. Oh, I love it. Faw skepticism encouragement. I don't, don't just believe what I say. Let's talk about real results with real people. I wonder if he's going to bring any real people that have had real results on. That's what I'd do next if I was a charlatan. So I gave the supplements to two viewers five days ago. Brilliant. Brilliant. And he's giving them away for free. My God, what a nice guy. Uh, how, how did it work for you? Ah, uh, yes. The March of the Karens begins. I believe that Dr. Oz's secret is that he draws energy from Karens, like, Goku draws energy from all life to create the spirit bomb. IFBB Pro uh, and Renaissance Periodization bodybuilding coach Jared Feather draws energy from uh, women of Southeast Asian and uh, uh, Latin descent. Uh, and, uh, you know, Dr. Oz, stay calm, Scott the Video Guy. Dr. Oz draws energy from Karens because there are a lot of Karens that want to lose weight, understandably. Karens, no offense. Call me whatever you like, steroid addict, ugly man.
all true. But um, but they got there's just so many of them. And so that explains why Dr. Oz is so powerful. Um, it gave me more energy than I usually have. Is that woman at gunpoint? She looks very afraid. Tell them right now. Tell them you hate the U.S. government. Tell them free all terrorists all around the world and that you like this green tea extract supplement. Go! <laughs> okay, okay, okay. It um, made me less hungry than I usually am, you know, in the beginning stages of trying to lose weight. And I seemed to get fuller faster when I was eating. I did get a lot more energy. I didn't change my diet. Everything was the same. I was fuller and I was fuller longer. Oh my God. I was gonna dig into these women. Oh, these seem like such nice ladies. F Dr. Ah, oh, stop ripping people off. They're good people. Here's the thing. I get snarky all the time on the channel, especially in these reacts videos. IRL though, like, man, we're all on the same team. You know what I'm saying? We're all human beings. I got love for everybody. Except people like Dr. Oz who rip everyone off. These are such like, oh my God, f And I was excited with my results, so. You were, she excited. Okay, let's find out. <laughs> Tanner started off at 176 pounds, and in five days. Guys, five days means nothing in the weight loss world. I could give you a diuretic, a pill that makes you drop body water alone. You lose 15 pounds in five days, no problem. That doesn't mean anything. Ugh. Five days with nothing else changing. Ooh, I like that um, the weight loss comes from a random number generator. They're like, well, it's actually like a lottery. You lost two pounds. Oh, yeah, that's not even that exciting. Um, I thought for a second that the green bar was for how much weight she lost. And she and Karen lost 174 pounds. Congratulations. Oh, my God. Ooh. Which is good. Okay, again, five days ago, you were 255 pounds. That's a lot of Karen. Less than a week later, Omara has lost six pounds. That's more than a pound a day. <laughs> Black men in the audience are like, boo. <laughs> Am I allowed to say that, Scott the Video Guy? We'll see. The non-drug-free side of bodybuilding, these people will try anything and everything and do try anything and everything to put into their bodies to maximize their results. And these are the leanest people in the world. Coffee extract and shit like that, it just doesn't really make the list. Truly powerful weight and fat loss drugs are actually available. They are called GLP agonists, and uh, they're, they're getting more advanced now that they have GLP, GIP combined agonists. They're in the lab working on triple agonists with glucagon, so that triple threat he was talking about, that's a real thing now in the lab. The results from these are way more impressive. They're real. It's not like one BS study that some supplement company makes that nobody's able to replicate. And this is the real pain, problem and pain with this kind of stuff. People who want to lose weight, you know, it means something to them. Sometimes they can even be described accurately as desperate. And they go and they get hope from watching these stupid shows like this. And then they take the stupid green tea extract or coffee bean shit that he's selling. Him and his cronies get a fucking fat cut so he can have his net worth of fucking God knows 100 million plus. And then you go and you spend your hard earned money on the shit. You take the pill and basically nothing happens. And uh, that blows. That blows. Selling people shit that does not work is, um, gee, it's immoral. I would call it immoral. Dr. Oz. What do you get when PhD sports scientists collaborate with pro bodybuilders? The most effective muscle growth training app ever made. Get yours now. You know, most women are eating foods that are absolutely wreaking havoc on their metabolism. As an exercise physiologist, I can tell you flat out, this is categorically false. There are precisely zero foods that wreak havoc on your metabolism. They just don't exist. One of the biggest setbacks to weight loss, says Dr. Ack. Chili peppers, potatoes, what else? What else is bad? Is eating apples, they're fucked up. What he calls metabolism death foods. Man, you know someone's onto some right shit when they can say metabolism death foods with a straight face. Shut down your body's fat burning potential. Uh, I have more to say in a second. I've discovered the secrets to help you rev up your metabolism and turn your body into a fat burning machine. Finally, someone with secrets. I don't mean to get personal, but I wonder how far my fist could move through this man's face before violating the laws of classical physics and leading to Einsteinian 
reactions causing the destruction of an entire city block behind him. I'm being a bit extra. Let's go to the video. Metabolism death foods are foods that act like toxins on your body and actually put your body into a fight or, uh, fight or flight response. Hey, you fucked up your can pitch, idiot. Fight or flight responses typically lead to weight loss. The fight or flight response is characterized in almost everyone by a reduction in appetite and an increase in energy expenditure. You know, that's how that works. If you shock a rat with electricity in a cage all the time, weight gain's not the result. Weight gain generally comes from a lot of parasympathetic activity of a lot of just, you know, sitting on the couch and being really relaxed and throwing back Cheetos. God damn it, this is all backwards. Oh, and it's Josh Axe, DC, who DC seems to be not also a real doctor. This is Dr. Axe. He's since moved on after this clip recording to be a doctor in his own right. And Scott the video guy will get to his ass at some point in his own stupid video. Physician and nutritionist, my man. You know, and one of the scary things about it is a lot of these foods are actually labeled as being health foods. By idiot real doctors. When in fact, they're the very same foods that are shutting down our metabolism. The first up, rest in peace metabolism. Oh my God, they have little gravestones. And there's a little skull on there, it's so adorable. It's kind of like uh, Dia de los Muertos, you know what I'm saying? Like, by the way, when bitches on Dia de los Muertos get that half the half skull painting shit, you know, boy's all about that. What's up, ladies? Just kidding, I'm married. Uh -huh. But Jared Feather is not. So what's your problem with them? Well, you know, <laughs> the, the problem that I have with whole grains. I don't care. God damn it, it's my job to care. Okay, I'll put on my care hat. Well, one big one is that these are empty calories. I'm sorry, what? What? Oh! Ugh. Let's do some science. Empty calories is a shitty term. It was made up a while ago and it should have never been made up, but let me explain what the best intention of the term is. Empty calories are when you have a food that has calories in it, that is it has protein or carbohydrate or fat, but it has very few micronutrients in it per an, any given amount of it that you eat. So very few vitamins, minerals, phytochemicals, or fiber per how many calories that food has. So something like Laffy Taffy. You eat Laffy Taffy, you laugh with your friends eating taffy ostensibly, and it has carbohydrate, it has calories in it, but not really any vitamins or minerals or phytochemicals or fiber. Do you guys wanna know a food group that's the opposite of empty calories? Whole grains. Oh, I gotta suck that Ready. In place of those grains, sprouted grains and coconut flour. If I told you that sprouted grains were a subcategory of whole grains, would you be mad at me? And coconut flour, uh, while I'm on the subject, coconut oil, which many of these people pushed as healthy, turns out to be in large quantities not so great for your cardiovascular health. So this is a double wrong. We well, you know the good news is you can have your grains and eat, eat them too. You know, when you're looking at sprouted <laughs> grains where- Dr. Oz is like, man, that's pretty funny, man. Nah. So now your body's able to absorb all of those nutrients that support metabolism. And my favorite flour is coconut flour. It is a dieter's best friend. I'm gonna kill myself. That's it, that's all I had to say. We know more than ever about why your fat deposits where it does. So here's the question for all of you. Which new body type are you? Old body types, annoying. New body types, what up girl? Hey, Max the editor guy, can you take that meme where it's the guy with the girl and he's looking at the other girl's ass but it's old and new body types? Yeah, boy. You know what I'm saying. Valerie volunteered herself as being the sugar type. Do you love sugar? I do, yes. Yeah, which one's sugar type? Oh, she should have love handles. When you have a lot of sugar, the insulin has to deal with it. And when you make more insulin, guess what it does? All right, hold up. She's got a, she's got a, her guts big. Isn't that the stress type? She got some love handles though. Listen, ladies, nah, it's not my place to say this, but a little bit of love handle. Oof, nah, I don't Oof, best. Don't stress too much. Otherwise you're the stress type, see? It says store the sugar as fat. Oh. And it then very meticulously goes to certain parts of your body. In many cases, it'll become those love handles. Yeah. So to deal with it, you have to use sugaring lowering techniques. Yes, sugaring lowering techniques, Dr. Oz. Tell us more. This, my friends, is a mashed banana with two eggs. Okay, mashed banana is essentially all sugar. I don't know what's happening anymore. I'm confused and the world is becoming dark. Again, there's no flour. Isn't that good? Yes. <laughs> Who would have thought?
eggs and banana look like a pancake. And with this, you won't have the problem with the insulin. The other thing you can do is the problem with the insulin. Bananas are literally made of sugar, you idiot. How is this real life? So folks, when the childbearing years are progressing, you have, will often not only have a lot of estrogen, but you'll have strong PMS symptoms as well. There's everything bad about women. So yeah, you're a woman. I'm sure you have PMS too, right? She's like, uh-huh. He's like, you hate it. She's like, yeah. Now here's a stupid banana sandwich for you, bitch. I, I do. I have a very bad PMS. I, I get tired too. I'm tired and I want to overeat and not eat these foods that are sitting here. Hey, pause. There's not a goddamn thing wrong with your body, Karen. You're looking fine as shit. But uh, I could see an argument for more estrogen for this girl. Wear that ass, though. Like she's got something, a little, a little white girl pancake back there, but more estrogen, not less. No, no, they, no, why would I put these foods here? These are vegetables, right? But they're not just any vegetable. No, no, they're specific vegetables. And here's the big story. If you want to deal with the estrogen, you actually have to deal with the, with the, with the foods you're eating because they can help block the estrogen. Yes, estrogen blockers used in the treatment of breast cancer that come with a variety of downsides. You see, estrogen is good for building strength, good for building muscle. It is excellent for maintaining a, uh, a good mood day to day. It is vital for proper psychosexual function and it helps your bones grow. And lastly, and very importantly, is cardioprotective. It actually increases the probability that your heart will continue to be healthy for years to come. Estrogen is good for you in almost every way. Estrogen blockers are taken in two circumstances. One, in the medical world, when there's a tumor in your titties that is eating up estrogen and fueling itself with it, you got estrogen block to kill off that mother And two, if you're a bodybuilder and you're using estrogen blockers in the last maybe week or so before your show to get the extra drying effect. It is not good for your health. It is profoundly bad for your health. The last thing in the world you wanna do is block estrogen. Luckily, cruciferous vegetables do almost nothing to block estrogen. So the following will be a lie. Thank God. So come on back here. You know on the-, the Oh my God. Is this, a, is this pre or post me too? What the f He can like grab people and like, hey man, take my hand, see? Yeah. Broad diet plans that we're offering, like the day off diet as an example. What I love- Scott, when's the last time you were a guest on a game show and the host was holding your hand while talking you through a list of non-starchy vegetables? Because you can eat as much of this stuff as you want. All these great things, the asparagus is the bamboo shoots. There's no need to hold her hand anymore. Look at her face. Max, zoom in on her face. She's like, get the f off of me, God damn it. These are the cruciferous vegetables and they very specifically seem to help us deal with estrogen levels. That was all lies, by the way, just for those of you still tuned in. <sighs> Whatever it is that you do in your life can be entirely selfish and help nobody else. Dope. It can be super selfless and help everyone but you. Amazing. Both types of people are awesome for society. Then there is another type of person who does things to benefit themselves at the expense of everybody else. Those are not good people. We should have a general degree of compassion and love for all living beings. And for them, we need to go, you get the compassion and love, but what you're doing is a bad idea that you should probably stop. Dr. Oz, motherfucker, you're in that third category. And if I ever see you in the street, I'll probably just look at your hair and go, wow, he's so beautiful. But there's an off chance things could get quite confrontational, verbally, of course. I don't want to issue physical threats, as I believe that's illegal. But if we didn't have any laws, this would have fucking good. Scott the Video Guy, cue up more bullshit doctors for us to eviscerate. I'm officially upset. I've been Dr. Mike. I rate Dr. Oz as an asshole out of 10. See you guys next time. You guys see that right there? Give that a click. YouTube thinks you like it, and we think YouTube's usually correct about stuff.